Viewers, a Canadian spy agency has warned that India is using cyber technology to track the separatists abroad a day after the country's government accused a top Indian official of authorizing violence that included the killing of a Sikh activist in Vancouver. Now, in a report, Canada's Communication Security Establishment, or as we call it, the CSE, has said that India was using cyber capabilities, quote-unquote, to track and surveil activists and descendants living abroad, as well as stepping up cyber attacks against Canadian government networks. Viewers, Canada is home to the largest Sikh community outside of the country, and that includes activists for an independent Sikh state. Ottawa has accused India of orchestrating the 2023 killing in Vancouver of the 45-year-old naturalized Canadian citizen Hardeep Singh Nijjar, a prominent campaigner for Khalistan, the fringe separatist movement for an independent Sikh homeland in India's state of Punjab. Well, it is clear that we are seeing India being an emerging cyber threat. The CSE chief Caroline Xavier has told to the media. And as per the reports, as per the media reports, her agency has blamed the rift in bilateral relations between Canada and India for likely driving this activity. The report notes that after Canada's acquisitions, pro-India hacktivist groups have launched crippling DDoD's attacks, flooding a system with online traffic to make it absolutely inaccessible to legitimate users against Canadian websites, including the military public site. On Tuesday, officials revealed that Ottawa had traced a campaign targeting Canadian Khalistan activists to the highest levels of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. Testifying at a House of the Commons Public Safety and National Security Committee, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs David Morrison has confirmed a Washington Post story that implicated the Indian Home Affairs Minister Amit Shah in this plot to intimidate and even kill Canadian Sikhs. The Post cited an unnamed senior Canadian official as having said that Shah had authorized an intelligence gathering and attacks campaign including the 2023 killing of Nijjar. Morrison has said he was a source for this information telling the committee and I quote the journalist called me and asked me if it was that person. I confirmed it was that person." Unquote. The Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the National Police have said there are clear indications of India's involvement in this murder as well as a broader campaign of intimidation, violence and other threats against the Khalistan activists. India, of course, has categorically dismissed all these allegations. Delhi and Ottawa, earlier this month, each expelled the other's ambassadors and other senior diplomats as well. And in the meantime, viewers, let us inform you that four, four Indian nationals have already been arrested in connection with this murder. Watch this report. This represent varying levels of threat to Canada. As Canada in own objectives. The cyber programs of the People's Republic of China, Russia, and Iran remain the greatest strategic cyber threats to Canada. The PRC cyber program surpasses other hostile states in both the scope and resources dedicated to cyber threat activity against Canada. At the same time, countries that aspire to become new centers of power within the global system, such as India, are building cyber programs that present varying levels of threat to Canada. As Canada and in, in, in India potentially may have some tensions. It is possible that we may see uh, India want to flex those uh, cyber threat actions against Canadians. As per the observations that we've made in this assessment of the National Cyber Threat Assessment, it is clear that we are seeing India 
being an emerging threat actor. Um, what I can say is that we have seen that as the tensions have risen, even from the time that the Prime Minister himself stood in the House of Commons and spoke about the murder of um, Nijar, um, we already were already seeing observations that there could be mis and disinformation that is coming from um, those that claim to be uh, working under in for India, for example. And this is a generalization. We're seeing cyber and misinformation being tools of the state now. So as you get escalated tensions bilaterally between you know, any two countries, cyber is one of those tools that's easy to apply as is misinformation, and that's kind of what, that's what is, 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 is stated in the, in the report as well. On objectives. The cyber programs of the People's Republic of China, Russia, and Iran remain the greatest strategic cyber threats to Canada. The PRC cyber program surpasses other hostile states in both the scope and resources dedicated to cyber threat activity against Canada. At the same time, countries... Shifting focus to India, Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandrababu Naidu recently visited the Rushi Konda Palace in Vishakhapatnam for the very first time as the Chief Minister, expressing his astonishment and excitement at the grandeur of the whole construction. But he raised concerns about the environmental impact of building such a lavish structure which reportedly cost around a whopping 450 crore rupees viewers. Naidu has highlighted the contrast, the stark contrast between the funds allocated for this palace and the relatively lesser investments in irrigation projects in Uttar Andhra. And during his inspection, he criticized the decision to prioritize luxury over sustainable development, remarking that the palace does feature extravagant amenities, including a 200 ton central air conditioning system along with lavish bathroom fittings costing in lakhs. He also pointed out that such luxury, such opulence is reminiscent of royal palaces, questioning whether this aligns with the democratic values of the country. And despite the controversy surrounding the project, including the legal challenges and the opposition from the various political leaders, Naidu has again reaffirmed that the people have, after all, entrusted him with the authority to make such decisions. His comments have reflected a blend a very natural blend of pride in the architectural achievements as well as a critique, a healthy critique of the choices made regarding public resources and, of course, the environmental stewardship. Watch this report. Hyderabad lo, immediately Don't mistake me. Pratyok Adhikari Paristare. Nen Wadina Basha Esko Baranan, see that four series Avejarigai Adejay, sir. And a Yakribotan and Adutana Naka the Copa on the Gadu Nalapayan Rajikal Jason, Entoman and Jusan, poor Adam. Mean poor Adam the Rajike poor Adam, Siddhanta poor Adam, Rajala Kosram poor Adam. A put a land to Jaragala. Hinti Beni, Yarachka Linti, Puruguda Rajiki, Musugolo, Tapolo Jesi, Drudar Jesuna. They were over the border, Mutana Ekulpen border, Mata Vidisha, the Retro Tail of Penporada, Rodil with the Porada. He put a Rajiki, a Musugas, Coron Erasil Penpora, also sound good to be to Kunti, Elanti Jason Alapena. Tourism <laughs> Erosa Mir Tuste Idi Yevitanga, Summer Dinsakaleta on a Dutan and in Prajako Cheritor Lo Gurtunde Pay Vidanga, Babi Tara Logoda Yelante, one Chico Tevitanga, Cheal and Cheal Snavasarunda Leda Idi Praja Swami heavy price pages in the Praja Swami in the price of pages say 
చర్యని ఏ విధంగా తీసుకోవాలని చెప్పి నేను చర్చ చేస్తున్నా అది మెయిన్ గా మీరు గుర్తుపెట్టుకోవాల్సింది చర్చ కాదు చూడాలి అందరూ చర్చ దీనికి చర్చ ఏముంది అండి తప్పు దుర్వినియోగం జరిగింది ఓన్లీ శిక్ష ఇంకా మేము వేయాల్సిన శిక్ష ఏంటి ప్రజలు వేయాల్సిన శిక్ష ఏంటి ఏం ఏ విధంగా ముందు తీసుకుపోవాలి అదే ఇష్యూ ఇప్పుడు ఉన్నాయి అంటే అప్పుడు రాష్ట్ర ప్రభు అది రాష్ట్ర ప్రభుత్వం వర్సెస్ టు కోర్ట్ ఇప్పుడు రాష్ట్ర ప్రభుత్వం కోర్ట్ లేదు రాష్ట్ర ప్రభుత్వం In a radical, a significant security incident, Air India reported the alarming discovery of an ammunition cartridge found in the pocket of a seat on flight AI-916, which had just returned from Dubai to Delhi. The cartridge was uncovered after all the passengers had safely disembarked at the Indira Gandhi International Airport, highlighting a serious lapse in security protocols. and this incident has raised considerable concerns viewers especially given the backdrop of a recent wave of threats directed at over 500 domestic as well as international flights if you remember although these threats were determined to be all fake and false alarms they have nonetheless now intensified scrutiny over aviation security measures The proliferation of all these threats on social media platforms has also prompted immediate and coordinated responses from aviation and digital authorities who have been working tirelessly together to address and mitigate all potential risks. And in the light of this discovery of the cartridge, questions regarding the effectiveness of current security checks and standards and screening processes have also come to the forefront. officials are likely to conduct a more thorough investigation to determine how this cartridge was brought onto the aircraft without any detection and this incident not only emphasizes the importance of stringent security protocols but it also underscores the need for ongoing vigilance in the face of evolving threats in the aviation sector as authorities continue to analyze the situation this incident serves as a stark reminder viewers of the challenges faced in maintaining security when it comes to air travel particularly in an era where threats can spread rapidly and create widespread panic the aviation industry is now under renewed pressure to enhance safety measures to ensure the confidence of the travelers in the security of air travel Sena leader Arvind Swamy has now publicly expressed his regret over his recent comments regarding Shiv Sena leader Shaina NC addressing the backlash that he has now received and in his statement he has clarified that the narrative being constructed around his remark suggests that he has insulted a woman which he vehemently denies interestingly he vehemently denies this Sawant has emphasized that he has never intended to demean anyone and he feels he is being unfairly targeted with misinterpretations of his words. He acknowledged the emotional impact his statements might have had, expressing his sadness over any unintended hurt which had been caused. Importantly, Sawant has reaffirmed his commitment to the respect and dignity of women, 
asserting that such values should transcend political affiliations. And his remarks reflect an awareness of the sensitive nature of gender issues in politics and a desire to mitigate any further controversy. जर्सी गाय किसने कहा था महिला रेवण्णा रेड्डी जैसे उधर जो जो कुछ हुआ उसके बाद में प्रचार में जाकर जिसने सम्मानित किया तो क्या वो सारे महिलाओं के सम्मान थे मणिपुर में जो हुआ उसमें महिलाओं का सम्मान हुआ क्या देश में इसके बावजूद जो वक्तव्य जो हमारे माननीय हमारी महापौर मेयर मुंबई की किशोरी तई पेड़नेकर के बारे में आशीष शेलार जी ने किया उसके ऊपर कौन सा गुना दाखिल हुआ वामन मात्रे हमारी पत्रकार भगिनी को जिस तरह से उस दिन बोला उसके ऊपर कौन सा गुना दाखिल हुआ हाल ही में थाने में महिला पर फिर पदाधिकारी यही के पार्टी के ही पदाधिकारी ने अत्याचार किया आंदोलन हुआ थाना में कौन सा गुना दाखिल हुआ हमारे यहाँ जो पूर्व सांसद है उन्होंने जो कुछ किया उसके ऊपर कौन सा गुना दाखिल हुआ राम कदम जी जो विधायक है उन्होंने जो कुछ बोला उसके ऊपर कौन सा गुना दाखिल हुआ अगर आपको महिलाओं के सम्मान के प्रति इतनी अगर आपकी संवेदना है तो ये सारे लोग जिन्होंने जो जो वक्तव्य किया और जो महिलाओं को अवमानित किया उनके ऊपर भी कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए ये मेरी मांग है और वो जाकर पूछ ली जा आप ली आपसे प्रार्थना है भैया आपने ये बोला था आपके ऊपर गुना अब्दुल सत्तार उन्होंने सुप्रिया सुरे के बारे में क्या कहा था तो उनका क्या हुआ उसके ऊपर कार्रवाई हुई कौन सी कार्रवाई की बताओ तो मुझे अगर महिलाओं के सम्मान की बात जिप जो पार्टी कर रही जिस पार्टी के मंत्री अब्दुल सत्तार हो संजय राठौड़ हो जिनके ऊपर हमारी चित्रावाग जैसे भगिनी ने बहुत बड़े आरोप के लगाए आंदोलन किया देवेंद्र फडणवीस जी जहां आंदोलन किया क्या हुआ उनके ऊपर कौन सी कार्रवाई हुई तो बस एक राजनीतिक लाभ उठाने के लिए चुनाव है राजनीतिक लाभ उठाओ चलो एक शब्द को पकड़कर जो मेरी भावना कभी नहीं थी आज भी नहीं कल भी नहीं रहेगी और मैंने किसी व्यक्तिगत नाम भी नहीं लेके आया था फिर भी वो उसको जिस तरह से माहौल बनाया जा रहा है वो देखकर दुख होता है कि मेरे ऊपर कभी कुछ इल्जाम लगाना की कोशिश बहुत बार हुई लेकिन नहीं कर पकड़ा गया तो चलो इधर कुछ एक शब्द को लेकर चलो इनकी प्रतिभा भी मलिन करे तो उनके लिए उनकी बड़ी बड़ी टीम बैठती रहती उन्तीस तारीख को मेरा वक्तव्य हुआ एक तारीख को जब उस, उस दिन भी पूछा गया था उस दिन कुछ नहीं बोली हमारी बहन लेकिन एक तारीख को उसे याद आया किसने याद दिलाया किसने सारा कंस्पायर किया करने तो वो पाप उनके पास रहेगा लेकिन मैंने जो कुछ बोला अभी ये जो वक्तव्य हुए हैं सारे वो वक्तव्य करने में कौन है उतना देख लेना उनके ऊपर भी वही कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए उसी तरह महिलाओं का सम्मान वहां भी होना चाहिए पार्टी के लोग कुछ भी बोले और उस, उसके लिए कुछ नहीं हम बोले तो बात का पतंगड़ बना देते हो उसका ये दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण बात है लेकिन फिर दोबारा कहता हूँ मैंने किसी की भावना अगर मेरे वक्तव्य से ठेच पहुंची तो मैं संवेदना जताता हूं आप सभी जानते हो कि पिछले एक दिन से बड़ा माहौल भारतवर्ष में मचाया जा रहा है कि अरविंद सावंत जी ने किसी महिलाओं का अवमान किया जिंदगी में नहीं किया पचपन साल राजनीति में हूं फेमस पॉलिटिशियन एंड नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द बहुजन समाज पार्टी मायावती recently addressed the political landscape in uttar pradesh highlighting that the bahujan samaj party is contesting the assembly elections independently for the very first time in response to the announcement of elections for nine seats she suggested that this development has caused significant concern for the bharatiya janata party and the samajwadi party alliance indicating that their usual electoral strategy is now under threat Well traditionally the BJP and the SP the Samajwadi party have collaborated in various elections but Mayawati's decision to go solo is now being seen as a game changer of sorts that has heightened tensions for both the parties she critiqued the slogans being used by the BJP i quote if you divide you will cut and the Samajwadi party's message encouraging unity with the BSP for safety and progress Mayawati has argued that these so-called slogans are mere distractions which are meant to mislead the voters and to obscure the party's failings. Emphasizing the need for voter awareness, she called for the electorate to remain strict and vigilant against such tactics being used, asserting that the true interests of the public are now being sidelined by these parties as they now attempt to divert the attentions from their own shortcomings.
लेकिन इस बार हो रहे उपचुनाव में जब बीएसपी में मैदान में डटी हुई है तो अब इन दोनों पार्टियों में इनके गठबंधन की काफी परेशानियां बढ़ गई हैं। जिससे जनता का ध्यान बांटने के लिए अब बीजेपी बटेंगे तो कटेंगे और सप्पा एंड कंपनी के लोग क्या कह रहे हैं जुड़ेंगे तो जीतेंगे इन नारों को प्रचारित करने व इनकी पोस्टर बाजी आदि भी खूब करने में लगी है जबकि इन, इनके हर मामले में रही दोगली सोच व नीतियों को ध्यान में रखकर वास्तव में होना ये चाहिए कि बीएसपी से जुड़ेंगे तो आगे बढ़ेंगे व सुरक्षित भी रहेंगे हालांकि प्रदेश में विकास व कानून व्यवस्था के मामले में बीएसपी के रही सरकार की तुलना में बीजेपी की वर्तमान में चल रही सरकार से व इसके पूर्व में सपा के रहे शासनकाल से भी जनता को ये जरूर सोचना चाहिए कि इन तीनों में से केवल बीएसपी का ही शासनकाल Security forces have gunned down two terrorists during an encounter in the Anantnag district of Jammu and Kashmir. This encounter started after the security forces launched an anti-terrorist operation in the Halkan Gali area. Earlier in the morning viewers, an encounter broke out in Srinagar's Khyanar area during a cordon and search operation by a joint team of police as well as the security forces. and the anti terrorist operations follow a terror attack on two migrant workers a day earlier the two men from uttar pradesh were shot in the burgam district in fourth such targeted attack on the migrants in the kashmir valley in the last two weeks National Conference President Farooq Abdullah recently made a statement that has garnered some attention. While he emphasized certain key issues, his remarks reflected a broader concern about the political landscape and the rights of the people in his region. Abdullah has underscored the importance of unity and a dialogue among various factions to address the ongoing challenges, and he has hinted at the need for a more inclusive approach to the overall governance, suggesting that the voices of the marginalized communities should now be prioritized in discussions about the future and his comments have resonated with many who advocate for a more collaborative and representative political framework see ka wujood hi nahi raha tha aaj khanyar mein encounter hua lagta hai ki militancy bad gayi hai aur ye alarming situation hai ki agar Srinagar mein militant yahan maujood ho government ko iske bare mein dekhna chahiye कुछ जो प्रकाश ने वो लेनी चाहिए खासकर उमर साहब पे बहुत बड़ा फर्ज बनता है सीएम है अब जम्मू कश्मीर के और उसको देखना चाहिए कि इनकाउंटर जो होते हैं जिस तरह से अटैक बढ़ गए इन अटैकर्स के पीछे कौन सी वजूहत और क्या वजह है ये देखने की चीज लेकिन सेम जैसे Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh recently visited an ordnance factory highlighting the government's prime commitment to bolstering the domestic defence production capabilities and during his visit he underscored the significance of self-reliance in defence manufacturing advocating for increased investment in indigenous technologies as well as in innovation Singh has expressed his appreciation for the workers and engineers at this facility acknowledging their contributions to overall national security. He also emphasized the government's focus on enhancing production efficiency and quality standards which are crucial for meeting both domestic as well as international defense needs. 
Now, this visit of his reflects a broader strategy viewers to strengthen India's overall defense infrastructure and to also reduce reliance on foreign imports. Well, that's a wrap on this prime time. But before we do that, it's time to take a look at the headlines once again. Arvind Savant apologizes over the imported Mal remark against China and he says he would never insult a woman. Ammunition cartridges found in Dubai, Delhi, Air India flight complaint was lodged with the airport police. Two terrorists killed an encounter with security forces in JNK's Anantanag. Encounter started after the security forces launched an anti-terrorist operation in the Halkan Gali area. Mumbai crime branch begins extradition process to bring back Lawrence Bishnoi's brother from the US. NIA has announced a reward of 10 lakh for the arrest of Anmol Bishnoi. Well, viewers, that's a wrap on this prime time with me, Anukriti Sharma. I shall catch up with all of you once again tomorrow at sharp 7 p.m. Till then, keep watching CVR English for more news and updates.